These are major developments in the immigration back and forth between the governor and President Biden. Only our I-team investigator, Katie Legrone, is breaking this story tonight. Governor DeSantis has promised to stop the influx of undocumented immigrants into the Sunshine State appears to be intensifying, this time with children, even babies, feeling its most recent impact. That's because a week ago, this Sarasota facility known as the Dream Center was forced to remove all of the nearly 60 unaccompanied children in its care. Half of them were 13 or under. Sam Sipes is CEO of Lutheran Services, which operates the center. It was incredibly emotional for the kids and for the staff, yes. This place was, for many of those children, I would say for most of those children, the first place they've ever felt safe. The Dream Center is one of more than a dozen Florida facilities that temporarily house unaccompanied children who come into the state legally under the Fed's Office of Refugee Resettlement, a federally funded program that assists undocumented people seeking asylum here. The problem, while the center is federally funded and operated, it must have a state license to house children. And weeks after submitting all the necessary paperwork for its annual renewal, Florida's Department of Children and Families has yet to renew that license or even tell them anything at all. We received no response. We didn't receive a denial. We didn't receive an acceptance. And we weren't able to get answers from anyone in state government uh, regarding the disposition of our, of our license renewal. Without a license, the center had no other choice but to move all of the kids in its care to other licensed shelters in the state. Some were even moved out of the state altogether. Sad time. Yeah. It really is. These are real people's lives at stake. It's very sad. And and these 50 plus children were traumatized yet again by having to move in a hurry because we couldn't get clarity about our license status. In a desperate attempt to get answers, Lutheran Services is now taking DCF to court, asking a judge to weigh in on DCF's apparent no response. But answers over why this federally funded center isn't getting the state's blessing may go back to this. We have to put Florida children first. Back in September, Governor DeSantis signed this executive order directly against the president's immigration policies. In it, he essentially directs state agencies to stop supporting federal programs transporting to the state, quote, aliens apprehended at the southwest border who do not have lawful status here. His order includes a directive to DCF. Unless there's an evidence of need, the department shall not grant or renew any license for shelters caring for unaccompanied children. In a lengthy statement, a governor spokesperson cited the Biden administration, saying in part they continue to ignore his request to be notified on who, where and when the feds send undocumented immigrants here. When asked what evidence of need means, the governor spokesperson responded, it's still being established by DCF. Children should not be political pawns. Democratic Representative Anna Escamani of Orlando fears what this means for the other Florida shelters that temporarily house in total roughly 700 beds for unaccompanied children at any given time here. The fact that all of a sudden our faith-based organization supporting undocumented children is controversial it, it's 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 purely the governor playing politics. It's not good policy. And it causes a great deal of harm for those children and those organizations who now have to scramble to find a safe place for these kids to go. What I want to make really clear is that this is not political for us. Back at the Dream Center, its 100 employees are still being told to show up to work. What would you tell these children? I'm sorry, I think would be the first thing as they all wait for answers on what's next and if a nationwide political debate will leave them and the children they're called to help caught in the middle. We're approaching the Christmas season too and, and we really don't want to have to tell 11 year old victims of human trafficking that there's no room in the inn. DCF also has yet to respond to our questions about what's going on. Same with the feds. We know other shelters are also up for statewide license renewal over the next couple months. Meantime, Lutheran Services is asking a judge to require DCF get back to them either way within the next 30 days. Learning new details about how a recent move by the governor to halt the influx of undocumented immigrants to our state may be forcing children out. IT investigator Katie Legrone was first to break this story earlier this week, and tonight she discovers more children are being uprooted and forced out of the places they've temporarily called home here in Florida. 
In this Florida home, two bedrooms remain fully furnished. The sheets made, handmade pictures hang on the wall. But the children who these rooms were designed for are gone. So they had to move out right away? Right away. With no explanation on when or if any more children will ever return here. What was it like saying goodbye? Oh, it was hard. It was hard because, you know, you, like I said, they get used to you. He's a foster parent who for the past seven years has cared for roughly 250 children who arrive in the state through the government's unaccompanied children's program, created to temporarily care for unaccompanied kids until they are united with a relative or sponsor. They are so humbled and so grateful. Yes, they are. Sorry. He's asked us not to reveal his identity because he's concerned the state's child welfare agency will punish him for speaking out. For months, he and his wife have been waiting for Florida's Department of Children and Families to renew their license to house unaccompanied kids. But the agency has yet to tell them anything. Their license lapsed in September, forcing them to suddenly say goodbye to the teenage brother and sister they'd been looking after for weeks. Heartbreaking, heartbreaking. I couldn't believe it. I came in and cried. <laughs> Earlier this week, we were first to reveal the state's sudden and unusual silent treatment to facilities supporting unaccompanied children here. About a week ago, this federally funded shelter in Sarasota also had to relocate nearly 60 unaccompanied children, half of them under 13 years old, because the state wouldn't renew its license in time. We received no response. I've never experienced this before, so I don't really, I don't really understand. The center now getting the courts involved, asking a judge to make DCF determine one way or the other if they'll be relicensed. In a lengthy statement, the governor's spokesperson cited the Biden administration and its lack of transparency in sharing who, when, and where it's sending undocumented people to in Florida. The governor now pushing back, broadly directing state agencies to stop supporting federal efforts, including this directive to DCF to, by and large, not renew the licenses of anyone caring for unaccompanied children. People have a uh, misrepresentation of these kids, you know? A lot of people think, you know, these kids, you know, they're gang members, they got their, 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 their killers and, you know, they're, they're, they're um, rapists. No, it's not. It's everything the opposite. Back in this home, art remains the handmade reminders of the children who have come and are now gone. This foster dad and his wife hold on to pictures and videos of the children they've served. Fresa, fresa. These are kids you're dealing with, you know, and all these kids deserve a second chance. They deserve a chance in life. Praying politics doesn't stop the mission they believe they were meant for. When you dedicate yourself so much to these kids and you, you give all you have in, in your heart, it hurts. It really hurts. Despite our repeated requests to DCF about these licensing issues, they appear to be giving us the silent treatment as well, telling us they don't comment on pending litigation. Katie Legrone reporting. We have more information on this investigation and all of Katie's stories up on our website right now. That's abcactionnews.com. Just click on the link that says iTeam at the top of the page. You can learn more about Lutheran Services, the first shelter we told you about, and how you can help the kids that were affected by this policy. There is new fallout from the governor's order that takes aim at unaccompanied children who land here in Florida. They got here as part of a federal refugee program, but now they're being moved again out of state. I-Team reporter Katie Legrone tonight expanding her original reporting on this, talking to news sources who say the state is playing politics with children. Weeks after we were first report how the state is inexplicably not renewing the licenses of shelters and foster homes that provide temporary care to unaccompanied children, members of the American Academy of Pediatrics are now calling on Governor DeSantis to revoke the executive order they say is behind this sudden new crackdown on kids. Our governor has children himself. Like, I just can't imagine how this decision could be made knowing that kids can't make they can't speak for themselves. They need to be protected. Dr. Lisa Gwynn leads Florida's chapter and for years has worked with a mobile clinic in Miami that provides care to unaccompanied kids who cross the border and are reunited with family as part of the government's federal refugee resettlement program. They're innocent. They just want, they're excited to, to be reunited with family. They're excited to be able to go to school and to live in safe communities. And doesn't every child deserve that? 
They are farming out people all across communities across the United States, including here in Florida, yet they don't ever tell us what they're doing. Similar to what Governor Abbott did in Texas over the summer, in September, Governor DeSantis issued this executive order directing state agencies not to support any federal programs, quote, transporting aliens apprehended at the southwest border. DeSantis said it was in response to what he called Biden's border crisis and an ongoing lack of transparency from the feds over who, when, and where they're resettling immigrants in Florida. We're entitled to know given that we bear the cost of most of this. In his order, Florida's Department of Children and Families is directed not to renew the licenses of child care providers who temporarily care for unaccompanied children. Then a few weeks ago, this shelter in Sarasota was forced to relocate nearly 60 unaccompanied children in its care, half under 13, because DCF wouldn't renew its license in time and never explained why. I've never experienced this before, so I don't really understand. The center, operated by Lutheran Services of Tampa, is now taking DCF to court. Despite repeated requests, DCF not commenting or explaining to us what's going on. The feds telling us any questions about state licensing should be referred to the state. Meantime, in a statement, U.S. Congresswoman Lois Frankel of Palm Beach County said closing shelters is contrary to the values of our country. Unfortunately, the federal government has limited authority to intervene with the governor's inhumane actions. Frankel also now asking the governor to reverse his policy, which provides exceptions if DCF determines the resettlement of these children constitutes an evidence of need, though DCF has yet to publicly explain and define what that really means. A child that doesn't have parents or a place to go, I mean, if that isn't evidence of need, I don't know what is. So we are all very, very confused. With more than a dozen shelters in Florida working with the feds to temporarily care for unaccompanied children, the American Academy of Pediatrics is concerned about whose state license is up next and how many children could find themselves being uprooted again if Florida shuts down to them. And they're already up against so much. And now we're going to have our leadership take strip their ability to have a safe place uh, to be able to begin their lives in, in, in our country. It's just inexcusable. A Lutheran spokesperson told us the feds recently granted them a waiver that allows them to operate without a state license. However, the organization is letting its court case go through the process to make sure they are legally able to take care of these unaccompanied children. To a story that you'll only see on ABC Action News, Governor Ron DeSantis responding to an I-Team investigation that uncovered his order led to immigrant children being forced out of state shelters across Florida. And tonight, investigative reporter Katie Legron, who first broke this story, recently pressed the governor for answers on why he's shutting down Florida to these children. So today, during a recent roundtable in Tampa on first responders and mental health, Governor DeSantis, we asked Florida Governor Ron DeSantis about migrant children and his order aimed at relocating them out of Florida. Unaccompanied children are being forced out of shelters here in Florida because DCF is not renewing their license. This appears to be in direct response to your executive order that directed them not to renew the licenses of these providers that service specifically unaccompanied children. Governor, why are you bringing kids into this immigration debate? I want our resources focused on needs for Florida kids and the needs we have in our communities. These are people that are coming from other countries. They shouldn't obviously be allowed into the country. His response comes weeks after we were first to discover as a result of an anti-immigration order he signed in September, Florida's Department of Children and Families has stopped renewing the annual licenses of federally funded shelters caring for unaccompanied kids who cross the border before they're reunited with family here. This place was, for many of those children, I would say for most of those children, the first place they've ever felt safe. So yeah, sad. Last month, this shelter in Sarasota had to relocate the nearly 60 migrant children in its care because the state wouldn't renew its license and never explained why. These 50 plus children were traumatized yet again by having to move in a hurry because we couldn't get clarity about our license status. Lutheran Services, which opened the shelter after a request from the Trump administration, now asking a judge to make DCF 
give them some answers. Secretary Harris. DCF and its boss. Secretary, are you not going to renew any of these licenses? Also giving us the silent treatment when we ask questions about it. Children should not be political pawns. I just can't imagine how this decision could be made knowing that kids can't make they can't speak for themselves. But despite calls from lawmakers and child advocates asking the governor to reverse this order and allow DCF to relicense these nonprofit shelters. We want all those resources focused on Florida kids and American kids. The governor appeared committed to upholding his new policy. We don't want to be the place where those kids are being put to the back of the line because Biden is airlifting people in. Uh, from from the southern border. These are shelters that are okay, federally I've funded. I've answered your question. Thanks. And that's all the governor would say about it. Meantime, an emergency hearing in the case between Lutheran Services and DCF is scheduled for this Friday. We'll be there. I'm Katie Legrone reporting. And this is an issue that we're going to stay on top of. You can read Katie's original reporting and her investigation and her follow-ups on abcactionnews.com. Just click on the I Team section. Developments in an investigation our I team first exposed weeks ago. Tonight, as the governor doubles down on illegal immigration into our state, I team reporter Katie Legrone has breaking new details on what will happen to kids getting caught in the middle of this debate. Weeks after we were first reveal how this Sarasota child care shelter was forced to relocate all nearly 60 unaccompanied migrant kids in its care because the state would renew its license in time. Governor DeSantis. And a week after we questioned the governor about it. Why are you bringing kids into this immigration debate? The shelter known as the Dream Center is suddenly granted a new annual license. The must have state license provided just one day before Florida's Department of Children and Families was scheduled to explain to a judge why it had been stonewalling the center. A spokesperson for Lutheran Services, which opened the shelter in 2019 after a request from the Trump administration, telling us in a text, we are thankful this issue has come to a resolution, adding, with our license now in hand, we plan to resume operations and continue to support vulnerable children. But how long that mission will be able to continue in Florida remains unknown. The Dream Center is one of more than a dozen shelters in Florida that temporarily house unaccompanied migrant children, after they've made it over the border, but before they're reunited with family or sponsors here. But it's these shelters also being targeted by Governor DeSantis as part of what he describes is Biden's border crisis, which have included secret nighttime flights moving migrants, including children, into Florida with no notice and no basic detail on who's coming in. You don't know who any of these folks are. In September, he ordered the state to stop renewing these shelters unless there was an evidence of need, which at the time hadn't been defined. Today, as the governor doubled down on illegal immigration, including his new policies impacting kids, DCF also issued this new emergency rule offering more detail on the future of shelters housing unaccompanied kids here. In the short term, programs that will likely be able to renew or retain their licenses. In the long term, um, we'll have to see. Lisette Burton is a child care provider advocate. While the new rule won't impact shelters whose licenses expire within the next 45 days, it limits shelters from getting licensed to care for more kids and requires the feds give the state notice on kids coming in. I don't think that the appropriate place to put pressure on changes for the immigration system is on the backs of really vulnerable children and on the backs of mission driven community based organizations who are serving those children and serving them well. The cartels are taking advantage of it. There's human smuggling and uh, it's just a really bad situation. So for us to be as a country basically facilitating that that's a really, really bad policy. It is very hazardous. Still so many questions as to how all of this will play out, but for Lutheran Services and the Dream Center, now that they have their license, they look forward to accepting kids when remains unknown. I'm Katie Legrone reporting. Meanwhile, this is an issue we are going to stay on top of, and you can read Katie's original reporting and her follow-ups on abcactionnews.com. Just click on the iTeam section.